Good morning, Facebook world. It is Lucy Collingridge from Local Land Services here. I'm in sunny Narrabri this morning. If you are joining us in this video for Fox Control to protect your lands, please let me know where you're tuning in from. We'll just have 30 seconds or so here so people can jump on. So where are people joining in from today? Have we got people in the Northwest joining us? Righto. We've got a few people popping up this morning, so hopefully it's nice and warm across the region. We might just get started. Hello, Summerton. Okay, so my name's Lucy Collingridge. I'm a biosecurity officer with the Northwest Local Land Services in Narrabri. Um, whilst this session will be based here in Narrabri in the Northwest, um, Local Land Services services the whole of New South Wales. So if there's anything in here that you want to discuss, there's a phone number at the end of this session that you can call and you'll be directed to your closest um, Local Land Services office. So while we have different programs um, compared to some of the other regions, the information that I'll provide today is generally the same for the whole of the state um, with a few different program differences um, and a few different oper operational differences throughout. Okay, so what we're talking about today is foxes. Foxes and how we protect our lambs at lambing time to increase those marking percentages and at the end of the day increase the profit in your back pocket. So we don't know how we're going to control this problem if we don't know what we're trying to control. So I'll talk quickly about what foxes are so we understand the enemy. Um, we'll talk about why we need to control foxes to help our lamb rates. Um, there's some good figures out there um, to support why we need to control them. Autumn and spring baiting, you may have heard that this is the perfect time to control foxes um, to target the weaknesses in their life cycle. Um, so we'll talk about why, um, what your options are for fox control. So there's not only baits out there that you can use to target foxes. Um, I've got a few groups here in, Nar in the Narrabri region that are doing really, really well. Um, coordinated pest animal groups that routinely fox bait in autumn and spring. So I'll discuss what they're doing, why they're doing it, and what they've found. Um, broad, scale, broad scale coordination is essential. So why do we need to have these groups across the region and across our state to control numbers? Um, there's a few bits of practical information in there. I've added in some peri-urban stuff. Um, we had some comments and questions over the weekend about peri-urban um, issues with foxes. So I've added some peri-urban stuff in there. And then how we as Northwest Local Land Services can help you um, control your foxes. So first up, foxes knowing the enemy. So they usually live in family groups within their own territory. This territory is also known as a home range and is the area that the fox will typically spend its whole life. So home ranges vary greatly. Um, things like land type, terrain, resources available and gender are just some of the things that will impact the size of the home range. So it's not uncommon to see home ranges vary from 30 to 500 hectares. Um, it really depends on where you are. Even our region, you look at Walgett compared to Tamworth, those home range sizes will vary greatly. So adult foxes generally stick to hotspots within the home range and it's uncommon for them to travel greater than 10 kilometres in a day. However, especially at um, when the cubs leave the den and the new new batch of foxes are out trying to find new territory, there are foxes that will travel over 100 kilometres um, and generally males will move further than females. So while in their general life they won't move very far to find new territory, they can move a decent, decent um, area. So foxes breed once per year, um, mating occurs in winter and cubs are born in spring. Pretty short gestation period of 51 to 53 days. Um, cubs are weaned at four to six weeks, which then means they leave the den at approximately 10 to 12 weeks. So if we're uh, mating in winter, 
cubs are born in spring, this means they're looking for their own territory in autumn. So that really helps us know when to target um, the foxes. So why we need to do something, what is the problem? Why are we losing lambs? So there's a couple of figures here and I'll just flip to the next slide that's got a whole heap of figures. So while you can see on the left-hand side, these are reasonably dated for the moment. Um, on the far right-hand side, you'll see that the predation from primary predation, which is particularly foxes, um, it will vary anywhere from zero to nearly well, 34.2%. 30, so you can still see um, dystocia, which is lambing difficulties and starvation mismothering is still a high issue. Um, predation is still a big one for us and we can manage those other things in different ways, but predation is um, what we're looking at today with foxes. So targeted autumn and spring control. So it's essential that we target in these periods to have the greatest impact on the fox population and to be highly effective and efficient um, when we are controlling any species, particularly foxes, we need to be four particular things. So we need to be coordinated, integrated, broad scale and cooperative. So coordinated is making sure that it happens at the same time as your neighbours. Broad scale is covering as large of an area as possible to target as many foxes as possible. Cooperative is making sure all landholders in, are involved. So you might have five neighbours that are um, sheep producers and you might have two neighbours that are crop producers. Doesn't matter what your background is and what your enterprise is, those crop producers have just as much responsibility under the Biosecurity Act to manage their fox populations as those that have sheep enterprises. And integrated, integrated, so there's no silver bullet, so you need to make sure you use multiple control techniques. So we're not just relying on baits to control our foxes. So why are we targeting, with those four key things in mind, why are we targeting in autumn and spring? So autumn is when we're seeing pups disperse. So like I said a second ago, this is when all those pups are leaving and trying to find new territory, um, particularly our males that are traveling further and our females we need to target um, because obviously they are the reproductive unit. In autumn, in spring, sorry, this is when pups are born. I think I've just mixed myself up. So autumn is when they're all dispersing and spring is when they're born. So when we're targeting in spring, we're targeting that time when um, females are obviously fertile, they've got a litter of pups potentially on board and if we target one female we are potentially targeting a number of offspring at the same time. So there's multiple control techniques available. So if we are talking baits we've got a few different options here. So meat baits are typically in the northwest uh, a boneless red meat or a chicken wing. Um, these are good for broad scale spring and autumn programs. Um, they're made from fresh meat and they'll break down quicker in the environment and these are quite palatable to foxes. Um, we have fox off which is handy for in between your fresh baits. Um, so you can get fox off that come in a bucket or in a tray. The buckets seal up quite nicely and they, um, they'll last longer on the shelf than what fresh meat baits will. So if you've got rain coming and you want to bait next week, you need to get baits because you're in town this week, we can give you a bucket of fox off that will then you'll be able to put out after the rain next week and it will help with your program. Canid pest ejectors, which is the picture with the yellow gloves on that right hand side. These are great for inaccessible areas um, or areas of higher people use. So if you're worried about particularly working dogs, um, these are good because you can just activate or deactivate them when you're ready. And we're not worried about birds picking them up and taking them away or foxes caching them. You can trap, so cage traps are good for around houses and sheds where you're unable to bait um, and built up areas where baiting and shooting is um, unviable. So you can trap, take it away, um, dispose of the fox, bring your trap back and trap again. Um, leak hold traps, um, more, more used for wild dogs, um, but can also be used for foxes. Just remember that your Trapping needs to be checked. Your traps must be checked every 24 hours in a trapping program. Um, and you've also got ground shooting. So typically spotlighting um, is what we normally see with foxes. Um, it's a really handy tool for those foxes that you can't get into a trap or that are bait shy. So they might have had a sublethal bait previously and they've had a bit of an upset stomach but gotten over it. They then associate that upset stomach with that smell of that bait.
Um, so that can help finish off those animals that are dragging out your control program because they're not going to be susceptible to one of these other programs, other techniques. So I have three pest animal groups here in the Narrabri Shire. Um, they range between grazing country to smaller blocks um, to a big mix of um, large cropping country with some sheep enterprises combined in there too. So they're seeing great results in population reduction through regular and coordinated baiting. A large reduction in fox sightings, particularly at lambing time, has been a big win for these farmers in these groups. So not only are they seeing reduced numbers at lambing time, they're also seeing reduced numbers throughout the year. So when it comes around to lambing time and they do their lambing bait separate to their spring and autumn bait if baiting, if lambing falls outside of these times, um, they're seeing reduced numbers throughout the year. So whilst the farmers of these groups generally only have one lambing, um, whether it be spring, autumn or winter, they've found it um, highly beneficial to bait in both seasons to ensure numbers are low when lambing does come around. So if they lamb in autumn and they only do an autumn bait, they don't see as good results as when they do an autumn and a spring bait. Um, so, yeah, and then they can then go ahead and bait separately um, to the group if they wish, just specific to their lambing. Um, the groups run both in autumn and spring and bait two times each season. Um, so the bait runs are typically two or three weeks apart and the groups utilise different meat, type, meat types on each bait run. So they're more likely to attract a number, of, like, larger number of foxes, larger range of foxes to the bait. So generally we'll use red meat baits for the first run. Um, so um, a red meat like um, kangaroo, and then we'll use a chicken wing on the second run. So if they've had a bad experience with a meat bait before and they might not pick up a meat bait, two or three weeks later when they put out the chicken wings, they've got more of a chance to pick up those, um, those pesky educated foxes with that chicken wing rather than just continually using mate bait, meat baits that the um, shy foxes to a meat bait will just not pick up. So why coordination is essential. So as I've discussed previously, there are four key things and one of those is coordination. So a coordinated approach to pest animal control is essential, especially for transient creatures like foxes. So we've discussed that they won't travel more than 10 k's in a day, but that doesn't mean they're not out and about in the environment. Um, the more farmers that work together to cover more land will result in more foxes being exposed to a control technique. So if you don't want to bait but you want to trap and your neighbours are baiting, absolutely trap while they're baiting um, and that will obviously help um, cover that larger area. Uh, doesn't matter how you control them as long as you're controlling the foxes in your area. Um, we're happy to come out and assist with your baiting, um, baiting groups. So my three groups that I've mentioned I'll organise a time and a place on a date that suits the group and I'll come out um, at the moment with our free baiting program. I, pre I prepare all the baits at my um, bait shed and I'll take them all prepared out to site. Um, at times that we haven't had the free meat bait program, um, they have provided, some people have provided their own meat. So I've taken out my chemical and I've injected on site and they've been able to take meat baits away. So whether we inject them or on site or we inject them prior, we can meet you out closer to where you are, um, be it on one of your properties of one of the farmers participating in the group or a nearby location. Um, we can try and make it easier um, to get the group going and make it easier on you guys that we know, we know you're busy out there. So peri-urban foxes, I mentioned before that we had some questions over the weekend. Um, the pesticide control order is a legal document from the EPA of New South Wales that provides us with rules and regs on how we can use 1080. So we must make sure that every baiting program, um, regardless of where it is, meets these rules and regulations. However, we need to give even greater care to closely settled areas and areas where baiting may impact other species, people or domestic pets. So particularly built up areas and around towns. So if you want to know if you can use baits in sort of those peri-urban and more built up areas, um, you can contact your local biosecurity officer and they'll complete a risk assessment with you that looks at your impacts on these other um, animals and people. 
um, and then they will decide with you whether you can proceed with a baiting program. If you can't proceed with baiting program, it's okay, there are other options. Obviously trapping um, is probably going to be your friendliest option if you're in a built-up area. Um, then you can take the fox off site um, to euthanize it. So our, if you want to proceed with a baiting program, our biosecurity officers can give you some tips and tricks um, to help with your trapping program, such as lures to attract foxes in and a few um, tips and tricks if you're having problems getting foxes into traps, um, like putting some grass on the bottom of the trap so they're not treading on just metal, um, that sort of thing. If you've got poultry at home, your best defence against a fox is a good fence. So be sure to dig some mesh into the ground so foxes can't dig under your fence and a roof will ensure they can't climb in. So foxes are particularly active at dawn and dusk. So make sure that you let out and you lock up your poultry at the right time. So some key information. So pest animals are like us, they're a bit lazy. Um, they will use the path of least resistance to conserve energy. So unlike you and I who know that we've got lunch coming up and maybe smoko because you've got smoko, it's smoko time with your smoko session, we know when our next, next meal is going to come. However, pest animals don't know when their next meal will be. So they'll use roadways and tracks um, just to make it a bit easier than trying to crawl over heavily um, heavily timbered or um, grassed areas that take more effort. Um, so things like cross roads and tracks and trails are generally high areas of activity um, and they're the perfect place to lay baits or your traps or shoot. Um, don't lay your baits too close together. Potentially the same fox can get multiple baits. Um, foxes are known to cache bait, so take them away and store them for later or the same box fox can pick up and eat multiple baits. Um, it depends on your terrain, but somewhere between 300 and 500 metres will work for most areas. But again, if we compare Walgett to Temworth, um, it really depends on the terrain um, that you're around. So we don't want any other animals to consume the baits that we're laying. So burying baits is a good way to reduce this risk. While native species have a high tolerance of 1080, it's good practice to bury your baits. Some farmers will prefer to drag a trail, um, a scent trail around their bait sites. However, this isn't generally required. In some instances, the trail may assist in one fox consuming multiple baits. And if there are any other pieces of meat discarded as a result of dragging the trail, um, you're providing a fox with a free feed when you want them eating the baits instead. So don't leave baiting just till lambing time. Don't leave it till your last minute. Um, look at probably four to six weeks in advance um, to be actually laying baits to make sure that your foxes are attracted to a bait while there are no lambs on the ground than when there's a walking free feed. So remember that they're a predator and if you've got a lamb that's going to run away from them, this is going to really trigger that um, predator influence in them that when the lamb runs they'll want to chase it and that's naturally what they've they've grown up with is that that chase so if you've got a lamb that's going to run away from them versus a random piece of meat in the ground they'll go for that lamb every time so make sure um, you and your neighbors get together and do your autumn and spring baiting um, to keep on top of the population and then you know look at four to six weeks in advance of when you're expecting your first lamb on the ground to then look at your lambing bait, which can be outside of that autumn and spring period. I've had a question in about how big fox meat baits are. So I was saying that how we can use red meat um, like kangaroo. Um, so these fox baits are about 100 grams before they're dried. Um, we dry them out so they're not running with blood. Um, 1080 is a um, water soluble sol um, solution. So when we inject a piece of meat with 1080, if you've got a really wet meat bait, uh, it's going to break down that 1080 and create a potentially sublethal bait. So we dry them out. Um, so they'll be a little bit littler than 100 grams when you get them to lay them in the paddock. Um, but when we deal with them, they're 100 grams. So my, I've only got a little hand. Um, my general guide is you know, the size of your fist, maybe half the size of your fist, um, just depends if you've got a really decent chunk of meat. And then our wings, our chicken wings are just a chicken wing. Um, there's no size 
real size guide with those, um, but we have a consistent size across our region, which works really well. So our Northwest LLS um, programs. So for the 2021 financial year for Northwest landholders, um, we're running the free meat baiting program again. So this financial year that we're coming to the end of, we provided free um, fresh meat baits to our landholders to assist with their baiting programs. Um, and we're continuing this for the next financial year. Manufactured baits, so fox off and capsules for canid pest ejectors. Um, these will both be charged at normal rates, but your fresh meat baits, so your red meat and your wings will be free. Um, if you want to take advantage of this program, please give us a call. Um, I'll pop a number up in a second and you'll be able to talk to your local biosecurity officer um, and organise some baits. We also have traps and remote cameras available to hire free of charge. So if you've got some foxes around the house that you want to trap, um, if you want to put, put a camera up and see what's happening, we've got some stuff that you can hire free of charge for that. We run free training courses for 1080 PAP and PINDONE. So you can't use these for other agricultural chemicals such as Roundup um, that you want to use on your farm. You can't use this card for those agricultural chemicals, but you can use um, the baits that we provide to you with this card. So again, if you ring one of our biosecurity officers, they'll be able to talk to you about when the next training course will be. Um, and yeah, speak to your local biosecurity officer about setting up a group in your area um, or accessing fox baits. Um, you don't have to be in a group to get fox baits, but it's definitely recommended as I've discussed today, you'll have more impact as a group, as a coordinated group than you would without it. So this is the magic number. Um, if you ring 1300 795 299, you will be able to speak with your closest office um, and they'll be able to put you onto your local biosecurity officer. So we've got staff across the whole region of the Northwest. And even if you're not in the Northwest, if you ring this number, you'll get put through to your local office. Um, please let me know if there's any questions. Um, if you're watching this as a recording later on, um, not in the Spoko session at 10 this morning, I can we can still have a team member reply to your comment if you'd like to know some information. Um, so don't feel free feel free to comment afterwards with your questions um, or just give us a call if you want to know some more information um, about baiting or any pest animal inquiry really. Um, but just a quick reminder that our offices are still closed at the moment. So if you would like to speak to one of us, this number is the only way you'll be able to do it. Um, you won't be able to walk into an office and catch up with someone. We're all working from home at the moment. So if you give us a call on that number, that will be a good way um, to help with your pest animal issues. Um, I've got a couple of questions coming through. So I'll just answer these quickly um, for those still on. So what's too close together? How far apart do you recommend laying the baits? Um, so like I said, it'll depend on what sort of terrain you're in. Um, three to 500 metres is probably a good guide to start with. Um, but if you're in hilly country, you might be able to put them close together. Um, just depends on yeah what your country is around you. And then what's a good lure to get a smart fox into a trap? Um, so I've asked this of a couple of um, more experienced staff and researchers than I am. Um, and KFC is apparently a really, really good resource to get foxes into traps. Um, I don't know if it's the smell of the uh, secret herbs and spices or what's going on, um, but they quite enjoy um, some fresh KFC. Um, and then some sweet things like sweet condensed milk and that sort of thing will help you get them in as well. Um, if you're having trouble getting foxes into traps, you can use it more like a pig trap and tie it up and let them come in and out and have a free feed for a few days. Um, placing your meat sauce out the door and then slowly bring it in um, more and more each time. Um, but yeah, if you have any more questions like that, feel free to give one of us a call and we can help you and we can come out and either drop a trap off and show you how to use it or you can come and pick a trap up if you need to borrow one. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining me today and hopefully you will get something out of this session and have fun with your control programs. I hope they're successful.